Welcome back for another video. I am your host Don Tron from Nerd Tots. And we're gonna do another review here today and it's gonna be on the movie Writing Bean. This is a film that I watched in my childhood. It came out in 1989. It was based on a manga of the same name. The fastest synopsis that I could say is it's about a superhuman outlaw carrier and his female partner slash manager who are framed for the kidnapping of a millionaire's daughter. And that's the gist of the movie. The movie is not long. It is only 46 minutes long. So it's a quick, quick film. And for that very same reason, I'm going to jump right into the plot and the story of it. And I'll get into that recap. As per usual, check the description below. I will have the time to skip to. And you don't get any spoilers because it's that quick a film. On to the movie. This is a film that is straight up 1980s anime goodness. You have all the bad things that you have in there, but it's overshadowed by what made anime good in the 80s. And I'm going to explain into that. We start off with classic 80s music playing. It's music that's made for the movie, but it's that style of music and then you have essentially your main character he's sitting waiting in the car sunglasses at night in a hot red supercar from what i can gather and he's just chilling out in his car they pan over back and forth to what looks to be a bank robbery I thought it was a bank robbery at first, and it turns out it's a store in a shopping mall. Very quickly, you can tell this is not a movie for kids. There is a woman that is completely nude, and you have no idea why she's completely naked. They just have her completely naked, and she's there being held hostage while another person is opening the safe so they can steal the money. When a security guard walks in, they shoot him, and you see him completely decimated when they shoot him. There was another security guard that was there and his guts are out and it's blood and gore out there the two criminals are running away with this naked girl in the mall and the car races up and picks up the two guys they let the girl go and they race off now they're being chased by the cops and there's a big tractor rig in front of the highway that they're supposed to get off on and they actually stop right beforehand just say the, the big rigs like this his car stops like this. Now, there's supposed to be no way out, but there's a fence on one side. They tell him, like, take that fence. And you see his car, and this is like your first clue that there's something unusual about this car. His car, he hits a certain trigger. His wheels actually go from this angle to this angle. And his car just drives straight like that through the fence, ditching the cops, drives through a factory. And as he's driving through this abandoned factory, one of the criminals takes off their mask, puts on a hat, but it's in front of a camera so they can get a picture and it looks like a little girl. They get away, he takes the money. It turns out that he's the getaway driver. He takes 45 grand for the job, which is most of the money that they stole but a job's a job. And when he leaves, the little girl then takes off a wig, pulls off her face, and she has a new face underneath. And the other guy that was there spits out like this ring that altered his voice, takes off his face in a wig, and is another woman. And they just leave it at that for a moment. Cut to the next morning, you see our main character, who we find out his name is Bean or Bean Bandit, as they will refer to him back and forth in the movie. And then... He's sleeping on the couch where you have this blonde chick that's sleeping in the bed. In true 1980s fashion, spend a good 30 seconds to a minute just focusing on her getting ready for the day. You know, putting on underwear, getting dressed, sliding in like the leggings with a, a pistol holstered on the inner thigh or outer thigh, whatever. And then she walks out and she tries to rake up Bean. She tasers him to try to wake him up. That doesn't do a trick. And then she takes a frying pan that was cooking an egg and puts it on his face and that wakes him up. So I'm going to stop right there. This is really quick happening. So at this point you realize A, there's something unusual about this car because wheels don't turn that way and B, something unusual about this dude. But there will be more to expand on that. Going into their breakfast, you see he's just eating this massive breakfast. He has a whole thing of salami, just eating it without cutting it down, drinks his coffee right from the pots. Takes a pineapple, cuts it in half, eats it skin and all. As they're having their breakfast, they're talking about how jobs have been short and they haven't really been getting as many good gigs as they usually do. And how she wants to bring down the price and he's like, there's not enough good uh, people out here 
to keep the price up. So they're debating about this. They get a knock at the door and they think it's another customer who they let in. And it's a guy who used to be a security guard for a millionaire and he has his little girl with him. Now we know it's, it looks like the same little girl that was in his back seat, but he doesn't know this. He didn't see the little girl at that point. And the security guards explain to him very quickly, she's been kidnapped and I got her back, but I need to get her back to her father. He'll pay your fee for transportation for safe delivery, which is 50 grand. And as he's agreeing to this, the window gets shot out and he gets shot all through his side, dead. Bean survives just because he lifted his coat collar and then shakes off all the bullets. He's not phased. So him, Rally, take the little girl, and now they're on a quest to return her to her father. Ala hopes to either A, get the money for 50 grand, or B, uh, just to drop her off. Basically, if things go south, they can just drop her off and they'll be done with that. They don't need that drama. As this happens, you get introduced to two characters. They're both cops. One's called Percy, one's called Dick. And Percy's the, the one in charge. Dick is like his partner, but the one that takes the orders, basically. And and Percy's like really has a thing for being bandit because he bought a GT500 and he's like obsessed with catching Bean. Percy gets assigned the case of finding the missing girl and he realizes from Dick, because Dick is the nerd guy, he's the research guy, Dick finds out that the missing girl is connected to writing Bean because they saw the photo from the, the night before. And Percy is now excited. He's like, I'm going to finally catch that bandit. Go back to now the mansion. Bean is there with the little girl. He's going to try to drop her off with the security guards. The security guards all have their guns pointed in the vehicle and they tell him, we want not only the girl, Girl, but we want her father. It's like, where's her father and where's the ransom money? Bean has no idea what's going on. Before he has a chance to just like drop off the girl and let uh, things go, one of the security guards has the audacity to insult Bean's car. Not only does he insult on his car, he spits on it. Bean has, from what I can gather, an emotional attachment to his car and does not take kindly to this. He does that wheel trick again and essentially pins the guy to a tree all of a sudden, and I'm quite sure he killed the dude, and then races off. They try to drop off the girl as they're being shot at, and they change their minds when they realize now they're shooting anti-tank rifles at the car because they, the security guards realize that the car is bulletproof. Which, mind you, these are like the worst security guards I've ever seen. Like, how do you choose to uh, shoot an anti-tank rifle at the person that you're trying to protect? Yes, I understand you're trying to get the car, uh, like, get them out of the car. But at the same time, that would destroy the entire car if not blow it up. Uh, at least in my eyes. So, he's trying to escape. The cops show up at the front gate. And as they open the gate, Bean flips the car and stops right in front of Percy. And he just drops the window, looks out, he goes, Hey, hey Percy, my man. How you doing? And they're just having a conversation. Percy's like, I'm going to catch you. You really messed up now. I finally got uh, the car that's going to catch you. And he looks over at the car. He's like, oh, GT500. So you mean you got the perfect car to get wasted in? And they're just smack talking back and forth. That's the point where Percy lets it known that they believe being bandit kidnapped the girl. And he's like, I didn't kidnap her. I'm trying to return her. But they keep shooting at me and I can't get a chance to get her off. At which point the anti-tank rifle blows up one of the cop cars and also damages the tire of the GT500. And Bean Bandit rides away, and now they can't chase after him because of the security guards. While this is all happening, there was a couple other scenes uh, in the story where they focus on the father. The father is with the two criminals that we saw earlier uh, in the movie. The woman and the little girl. You don't see the woman with the father at first. The woman was actually the security officer that was with Bean Bandit in his apartment that got shot up. He was the one that brought the little girl to Bean. She was in costume, made makeup and she had like makeup squids like they do in special effects and so she impersonated the guy and then by the time she gets back to her hideout where the father is she sees that the little girl that was with her was trying to put the moves on the father and confesses that the little girl was actually the lover of the woman which built all sorts of awkwardness the little girl did not like being rejected by the father by the way because she was putting some heavy advances on him and he he seemed like a genuine nice guy He's like, you're a little girl. I don't do that. And he's like, no. And then the woman, who I'm going to call Simmerling from now on, that's her actual name, comes back and sees the little girl doing all this with the old man. And the little girl's name is Carrie. Simmerling literally beats 
carry. And I mean, when I say she beats her, she beats her. Like front hand, back hand, knees her in the gut, elbows her in the back. It's like going to town. And Carrie's just like, I'm so sorry, mistress. I'll never do it again. I apologize. Don it was like domestic, child abuse, all sorts of things going on in all of like 10 seconds. And then they pan over to the millionaire father. And I swear he had the same look on my face where he was just like, I don't understand what's going on. But after that happens, you realize that uh, she wanted Writing Bean to take the little girl back because all she wanted was the money and the father as a hostage so they can kidnap him for more money. So they're trying to escape in the same big rig that was used to trick Bean into moving into the factory warehouse where they can get the camera done. It's all been in a big mastermind plot. As they're trying to escape, one of the drivers of the big rig is like, we're going to get gas and I'm going to get uh, snacks for the road. And she's like, is that even smart? And he's like, ah, we got plenty of time. This is like a small city, apparently, because the truck stop that he chooses to go into is the same truck stop that Writing Bean is in, trying to get ribs and a milkshake for the little girl and himself and Rally, where they're just there snacking, waiting, trying to figure out a plan how to find these people that stuck him with the little girl. And as they're arguing back and forth, they see the big rig. And without hesitation, he's like, shoot the driver. Those are the people that gave us the girl. Rally shoots the driver without question. Now we are in a car chase which this movie is your anime gold staple for car chasing. They chase this truck down. Bean is like putting it on uh, cruise control, telling Rally grab the wheel. He's jumping out through the sunroof, trying to get to the dr driver. And next thing you know, there are grenades just dropping out from the driver's side window. They're heading down to the highway to a construction site where the bridge is gonna be not fully developed. And Simmerling just kills the driver, puts his head on the gas pedal and goes goes into the trailer, which I never understood how that worked, but somehow there was a doorway to the trailer from the truck, but I guess that is a thing. And they drive out through the back of the truck trailer onto the road in order to try to escape. And Bean, in order not to drive off the ledge, hits the brakes and you see another cool trick that the car does where it hits the brakes and then all of a sudden these spikes come out from the hubcaps, grip into the street and stop it before it goes over. And they use it to back the car up, flips it around. And now we're really into a car chase. That one was just a taste of a car chase. Now we're going through a car chase and they're like, we're gonna drive through the city and that'll be the best way to escape. As they're going through the city, trying to dodge traffic, going through everything, the police now get involved and the GT500 gets to shine now because is trying to catch in and they're doing a car chase with I think it's a Mercedes it's a V12 for sure followed by Bean's car followed by the GT500 followed by a bunch of squad cars they're going through the overpasses they're going through the city and mind you this is supposed to be Chicago and you see other cars crash and they actually do the detail work to show the people in the cars as they're being crashed and you see their like the bodies and everything so there is definitely collateral damage and I am quite sure there are a lot of innocent people that actually die in this process if not severely injured and maimed and Bean and the mastermind Simmerling eventually ditch the cops going into an underground garage but they wrecked their car a writing Bean's car is fine but Simmerling's car is wrecked I should mention that in the car with Simmerling is the millionaire father Simmerling Carrie and then thug number two that no one really has a name for Bean tells Rally to watch over the girl and he's gonna go after the people. He gets to their car, no one's there. A walkie-talkie. Simmerling's trying to negotiate with Bean and she's like, I'll give you 500 grand and I'll give you a means to escape the cops. It's like, right now everything's on you, so just take the offer, we'll get you out. And he tells her, this is my counter offer. I'm gonna take the money, which was two million, by the way, and I'm gonna return the, the girl and, the, and her father, on top of which, I'm also gonna take your lives. And then cuts the microphone phone in half causes a feedback to Simmerling's headset, which causes her to yell out. And he throws his knife so hard that it blows out a car door when it misses Simmerling. She tries shooting him and he shakes off the bullets again. Now it becomes this whole thing of like Simmerling trying to dodge his attacks and everything that she's doing just doesn't work on him. Rally hears like the explosions and the gunshots and she gets out the car to check. And then thug number two gets a hold of the little girl and he throws 
threatens to kill her unless Rally can toss over her gun. Rally says, fine, I'll toss you my gun. And he goes, with your left hand holding the barrel. She's like, fine, fine. She tosses the gun with her left hand. He goes to catch it and he catches the clip. She flips it over and shoots him with the one bullet that's in the barrel. Right between the eyes. He's done. Pan back over to Bean and he's a little bit withered because he's been through some explosions. He's been shot a few times. The only injury that he has is like one time from Percy shooting a shotgun in his face. He has little scratches and like cuts on his face. That's it. But he's he's pissed. And he's about to kill Simmerling until Carrie shows up and Carrie is made a hostage from Simmerling. Bean has a thing for little kids. He he does not want to hurt kids, so he stops. And Simmerling uses that uh, chance to shoot him point blank in the forehead. And he still survives. He's a little shaken up and a little disoriented. Simmerling grabs a car, tries running him over. That knocks him back into his senses. And then he charges the car as it charges him. And with one arm, he lifts the front end of the car. And in a small moment, they both laugh at each other. As then she tries to shoot him again. And he flips the car. Car. Simmerling does not want to give up. At this point, I would have been like, take all the money. We're done. You know, you're a monster. But no, Simmerling's like, no, I'm going to try to fight for every single cent I have. Carrie steps in the way and she's like, I will tell you where the money is, where the father is. Just take it all. Just let us go. We messed up. We'll promise never to work here again. Semmerling's kind of pissed about this. Tries to shoot Carrie and does not realize there's gas on the ground from the car that was flipped over, causing the car to explode. At this moment, you realize that the cops are outside the garage. They're waiting for being bandit. And the officer asks Percy, why don't we just charge in? We literally have them surrounded. He goes, if normal police tactics work, you think I wouldn't have done that? So they're sitting outside waiting. Bean lets go of the little girl with her father. And then he asks the father, he's like, you okay with us taking the money? He's like, no, nah, it's money well spent. It's worth it. And he goes, all right, well, if you ever need our services again, we'll give you a discount. And he starts to drive away. And then he sees Carrie and he pulls down the window. He's like, he's like, you need a ride or anything? And she pulls out a gun and she's going to try to shoot him. And he's, he's like, you think that's going to work? And she's like, I still got two bullets left. And, and like, you killed Semmerly. He's like, did I? We both know what caused that explosion. And she looks at her arm and, and because it grazed her. And he goes, a lollipop will be better for you rather than a gun. And she starts crying. And then he lets her into his car and she passes out right in the back seat. He's pissed now because he doesn't want his car to become a daycare. After which, Rally asks him, do you think we can stay in the city because of all the drama that's been happening? Should we leave? He goes, nah. Listen, we got honestly good millionaires, downright dirty crooks, and some crazy police officers. And at this point, you can hear the officers on, on the front of the garage like, yelling out, Roadbuster, come out and play. And they're chanting this, Roadbuster, come out and play. And he goes, nah, it's too much fun. And he drives off into uh, the light of the garage. And then that's when they cut off and go into credits. So on that note, this movie is a fantastic example of the craziness that 1980s anime was. It had so much to it in such a short amount of time for 46 minutes. Dialogue wise, I'm going to say it's the weakest point of this film. It, it Without question, it is 1980s poor dubbing. The storyline is better, but but the character acting is where it failed. I can take the plot and I feel like the plot and this kind of story inspired a lot of other movies that are big popular films like The Transporter, Driver, where you focus on the driver and he's actually a badass but you don't really realize it until he actually starts doing his things. The music, it's fun. It starts off with like this 80s style genre music going to like the rock and going to like 80s rock at times and then even the end credits is kind of like this R&B jam music that's going on in the credits and the art is actually right up my alley of the style of art. It's very detailed. The characters become very very expressive. They don't really take away the details of the characters to do that. Their expressions, like when they're not being 
overly emotive. They're, they look almost beautiful for their designs in my eyes. And the artwork is just as detailed for the vehicles, the road, everything that they do in it. And they, and it's not feeling choppy. There's been animes that I've watched more recently that when I look back, the detail work is there, but it feels choppy. This feels much smoother and it still gives you that feel like, okay, this is really well done. This had moments where I laughed, had moments where I was like, God, what am I watching? And had moments where I was just focused on the action that was there. I would say I'm going to give this movie a four out of five nerd tots. It is good for the nostalgia feel. Absolutely. This is like the highlight of nostalgia on here. It is also good in the sense that if you want a film that you can watch and you feel confident that you can watch this with a friend, it's okay to tear apart. This is not going to be a film that will make someone feel offended if you tear it apart for like the dialogue, the content, the action. It's definitely not a film for kids. It has nudity. It has blood. It has cussing. It has action that leads back to the blood. All that's there is, I would definitely say it's like a eight rated R content, but it's palatable. It's not like we're just going to do this just to do this. Well, there are some scenes that they do just throw in just because, but it's not throughout the entire film. I can see the average consumer watching this and maybe being at a level three instead of four. But if you enjoy your nostalgia, if you enjoy your action, you want some cheesiness in there uh, and you can forgive the uh, dialogue just a little bit. It's not over overly bad even it's bad but not overly bad then i could say this is a passable four on it if not i would say you can downgrade to a three if you have the time check this movie out i found it on vrv now uh, you can find it elsewhere online but that's where i found it is a quick little piece of 1980s goodness check it out if you've seen it before comment below let me know what was your opinion how'd you feel if you haven't seen it and you do check it out also comment below i want to know if i felt the same way as you if you like what i'm putting out there you know what to do hit that like button hit subscribe and otherwise as per usual continue watching anime expand your minds and just be excellent laters let's go